Hi everyone, Andre from Chromeflex Films here, and welcome to part 9 of my 2D game development tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering the checkpoint system, and so we can allow our player to hit the checkpoints, and whenever he gets hurt or dies, he spawns back at that new checkpoint spot. So he doesn't have to start from the very beginning every time he falls out of the map, or loses a life. The way this is going to work is we're going to have an object that the player is going to interact with, and whenever it collides with that object, an empty game object is going to reposition itself to that checkpoint spot. So uh, whenever the player has to respawn, it finds that object and then it changes its position to match that same empty game object. So we're going to create an empty game object. We're going to call this respawn point. This is the object that's going to be uh, moved and this is where the player is going to be respawning. Let's give it a little icon here so it's easy to find. Now we're going to create another object and we're going to call this checkpoint. Let's tag it as a checkpoint. If you don't have the tag, you can create one. We're going to add a box collider component. We're going to make this very thin so we can place it on the ground. And I'll move it over here so before you hit the lava. Let's go to the code. So we're going to have to create a new if statement. We're going to say if you're colliding with checkpoint, then find respawn point dot transform dot position and we're going to make that position equal um, the new position of our player and we're going to destroy the object that we collide with all right that should work so let's test it So let's play it. Let's see if I get the key first. All right. So the respawn point moved. And so we know that works. So nothing. Yeah. So if I get hurt, yeah, I don't respawn. But if I fall out of the map, I still respawn at this this uh, starting area. So let's go to the uh, the temporary code that we programmed before and we'll change it. So its position no longer equals that starting position, but rather we're going to find respawn point and we're going to equal its position. So let's try it. There you go. So if I get a checkpoint, and if I fall out of the map now, I spawn where the checkpoint was. So that's how we know it works. I like it. So let's add something so whenever you hit the lava, the, um, well, you don't respawn, so we can have it uh, say game over whenever you lose. going to create let's see well let me import a fun texture that says game over I'm gonna create one in Photoshop really quick so this is a game over texture that I made really quickly I'll compress it it's not a standard resolution I apologize for that I'll just have it at low resolution See if I can import it in here. Change this layer. There you go. Kind of like the way it looks. We will attach it to the camera, so make it a child object. And we'll disable its sprite renderer. And we'll say whenever you run out of lives, 
here in the die function. Uh, we have to get component UI. Um, let's see, what is it? Sprite render. So it should be. Is there a sprite render in here? There it is. Yeah. Sprite render. Uh, I think it's just that. Was it uh, active? Uh, maybe it's maybe it's active. Let's try that. Nope, it wasn't that. Maybe it is. Let me add a debug. Try it again. Let's try something different. Let me see if I can get its color to change. So did I have a color up here? I can change it so it's already enabled, but it's alpha channel can be zero and it will change it to one. This is what it is. Get component. Let's try that. I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, there's an error. What is it? Oh. See if that works. Nope, that did not work. Yeah, uh, it's a sprite render. Let me change it to an image. Image, there you go. Add the sprite on top. Now, I believe that will fix it. Is it there? Hmm. Where did it go? Oh, it's not showing up at all. Try this again. UI. Drop in an image. Okay, that worked. Yeah, that worked. Try that. Yeah, that works. That's not too bad. Let's center it and make sure it looks good. Change its color, what looks cool. I like that. Now let's anchor it. Oh, it's already anchored. So that works. And I like it. So now we have a way to lose and we have a way to win. So what's next? Well, uh, I think the next step really is just to make a menu. So let's very quickly make a 3D menu. Copy this background. Make a new scene, paste it, save it, call it menu, and we will create a button. Let's position this button. We'll call it, we'll make it say start. Uh, where's the text? Ah, it's under here. Say begin. That works. And let's create a new script. That will say menu button.
open it up. Make it say mouse down. Well, before we load the level, let's just have it debug and say it works. So now we should have on click we can add a function. The object will be here. And our function we have, let's see, menu button on mouse down. Let's see if it works. There you go. So we get our little message here in the console that says it works. So all we have to do now is say application dot low level and the name of our scene, which is in this case demo scene one. I really should rename it, but that should work. So let me create just for fun another text. We'll call this game tutorial game. Not a very fun title, but you can change it in your Unity. Give it separate lines. Well, that works. We can have some fun with the button, by the way. So whenever you hover over it, you can uh, change the color. So for example, oh, I got an error. Why did I get an error? Try that again. Well, for one, I know that nothing's happening because we didn't add it to our build settings yet. See, this is my build menu. Uh, this is whenever you're building your games, you want to make sure that before you can actually build an, and run it um, as an executable or web player, however you're going to be uh, building it. You need to have your scenes built into the, the scenes menu here, the scenes and build right here. So to do that, you just click add current and you'll see the scene name pop up. Unity will only save and be able to access the scenes that are in this build menu. So you don't have to save everything in your scene or uh, every scene, sorry, in your build menu. So I just have these two scenes that we need. And now it should work. Okay, well that button doesn't work. Oh, because text is covering it. There you go. See how it turns red because I changed the color in the uh, inspector. But if we click it, it loads the scene. So I like that. This is a fully functioning game. And you can have a game over screen pop up when you lose. Um, which is what we have. And you can have a you win after you touch the flag. Uh, but you can do whatever you want with that. So that basically finishes up this game. I can add a few more details. Uh, but... That is really the basics of a 2D platformer. I hope that you guys found this tutorial series helpful. If you, this is your first episode that you're starting on, I would recommend going back to my previous episodes and checking out what else I cover because uh, I have a lot of good tips in there that I recommend you check out if you're new to Unity and you're just trying to get into game development. I have a menu video that covers all of the topics in on one screen so you can select uh, from there where you want to go to it's easier to find my tutorials that way and i hope that you make good use of that so thank you very much guys for watching i appreciate you watching my videos and i hope that i could have been a, that i was helpful to you and that you learned something about game development because that's really what uh, i'm doing this for so thanks again guys for watching and i'll see you in my next video